Learning to fly requires a lot of time flying, and if you go too long between lessons, you can lose some of that skill you're trying to develop. But what if I told you there is a way to develop your skills without flying? Spoiler, there is. My instructor always told me that you practice in the air, but you learn on the ground, and this is because the cockpit is a terrible classroom. When you're flying, things don't sink in because there's just so much going on. So here are some things that you can do to sharpen those skills on the ground. First thing, record your flights. This is one of the best things I did during my training. Seeing how I flew the plane, hearing the radio calls, and listening to my instructor again was a great review of what I needed to fix and things that I was doing right. And seriously guys, I was able to get significantly more from each lesson. So if this is something you want to do, I highly recommend using this angle here because it captures what you see, your inputs, and the gauges. Oh, and I've also put detailed how-to links down in the description for both audio and video. All right, our next item is chair flying, and this one sounds dumb, but it can really help you develop some skills. So here's how it's done. You sit in a chair and you pick a stage of flight. I'm using takeoff here in our example. So I'm starting on my imaginary runway. I'll have one hand on the yoke and the other one on the throttle. I'll slowly give the plane some power, and as I do, I'll increase pressure with my right foot to counteract left turning tendencies. Then I mostly focus my eyes down the runway, but glance down to make sure my RPMs are good and that the engine gauges are in spec. Then it's back to the runway. This glancing game continues with the airspeed to make sure that it's working and then I watch for rotation speed, at which point I pull back on the yoke, pitch for the horizon, and climb. Once out of ground effect and in a positive rate of climb, I'll adjust my trim to relieve pressure on the yoke and complete my climb out checklist, and then continue with the flight. Cheer flying is good because it helps you think through how to fly the plane and create muscle memory. Plus, because you're not actually flying, you can move at a slower pace to get good at whatever you're practicing for. Just make sure you have the proper steps so you practice right. Then it's just a matter of flying different stages of flight or maneuvers. And quick tip on this, say each step out loud as you do them. It'll help reinforce the activity. Now it's time for our biggest and most debated tool of all, flight simulators. And I'm just going to come out and say this. In my opinion, yes, a flight simulator you play on your computer can actually help you become a better pilot, especially now with Flight Simulator 2020. Here's how. Flying has a lot of procedures and almost everything has a checklist. So bring that checklist to the flight simulator. In the game, you can practice every one of them and start working on flows for yourself. And take the run-up for example. You can put the plane through its paces just like you would in real life, performing every item on that checklist. And at a bare minimum, running through these checklists, flows, and procedures in a virtual plane can help you locate common controls in the plane that you fly. And if the plane that you fly isn't in the simulator, you can always purchase other planes. Another perk of flight simulators is getting to work with the instruments, and when you're in a real plane, you can feel rushed because as soon as that engine starts, you're on the clock. But in the virtual plane, you can spend as much time as you want fiddling with every button and knob, and this really can help you familiarize yourself with what's going on in the plane. Along with that, you can work on instrument scans and different techniques and figure out which method works best for you. Next comes navigation, and this is a big one. So whether you're learning your VOR work for your private pilot license or practicing for your instrument rating, flight simulators can help you apply everything that you're learning. Even more so for the IFR stuff because you get to practice approaches, departures, flying routes, and more. And you can even connect your iPad and use it with ForeFlight, just like you would in real life. And this really is an invaluable tool that you can use. Now you can take this to the next level by adding radio work to it. And I know that sounds just as intimidating as it does in real life, but if you work with our sponsor first, you can sound like you know what you're doing. Plain English really is the best way to take control of the comms. And I'm not just saying that because they're sponsoring this video. So make sure to check them out down in the description and use our code for a discount on their services. But once you feel ready, you can use programs like Pilot Edge to add air traffic control to your flights in the simulator. And seriously, this can be a game changer, giving you the skills and confidence you need on the radios to take back to the cockpit. This last flight simulator benefit is one of my favorites. With more realistic terrain, weather, and airports, Flight Simulator 2020 lets you fly to locations with accurate sight lines and ground references. So you can fly somewhere in the simulator first to figure things out before you do it in real life. 
Take Catalina Island, for instance, one of my bucket list airports. I can literally fly my route there in the simulator, practice approaches, departures, and get a feeling for what it's gonna be like. And with Flight Simulator 2020 supporting VR, I can use that to see what it is really gonna feel like, because that stuff just tricks your brain. But regardless of whether you're using VR or not, flying before you fly creates a whole new level of safety for flights to new destinations. Now you can use any flight simulator you want to do any one of these things, except that last one. I only recommend Flight Simulator 2020 for it because of that realism. But if you're going to use a flight simulator to help out with any one of these, you don't need any kind of crazy simulator gear. A mouse and keyboard will work fine to get through things, but a basic joystick or Xbox controller can really help. All right, guys, if you have anything that you did at home that helped you develop skills to take back to the cockpit that you think could benefit others, let everyone know down in the comments. Your ideas can really help others along their journey. Anyways, as always, share your aviation wherever you can, and we'll see you in the next one.